Greetings, my fellow Imperial Sailors, and welcome back to another video of Warhammer 40k lore focused on the Imperial Navy. Like I mentioned in my previous Organization of the Imperial Navy video, my next topic was indeed gonna be the ranks of the Imperial Navy. So here we are. One thing I didn't count on, however, was how much more extensive this hierarchy was. So, upon seeing this bushy tree of officers and specialists, I decided to split the topic in two videos. Today, we're gonna be talking about admirals and commissioned officers, and in the next one, I'll cover the NCOs, the lower ranks, and the specialists. So, without any more muss and fuss, let us see who's in charge of the navy, shall we? The Imperial Navy utilizes a rigid command structure seemingly unified across this entire military branch of the Imperium, unlike their Imperial Guard counterparts, who have no truly standard organization below the high command level due to the enormous cultural differences between the worlds of the Imperium. The Imperial Navy is an institution with millennia of dusty tradition behind it, and regulations so lengthy that they could fill moon-sized data vaults to bursting. Attempts to modernize the Imperial fleet and update its protocols have always been doomed by the sheer size and inertia of an organization spread across a hundred thousand light years of space and potentially Terran centuries of time. Apart from this, each Segmente Majoris battle fleet is so riven with its own traditions and precedents that it is hard to be definitive about even something so basic as rank below the very highest echelons. In all cases, the constant risks attendant to fighting starships means that the Imperial Navy chain of command has to be robust enough to survive shocking casualties in battle and still keep functioning. A great deal of ink has been spilled codifying responsibilities and duties such that each sailor will know his or her place, although in practice these become, at best, guidelines, at worst, useless bureaucratic nonsense. Incessant training still drums the very same message into every sailor's head. Keep doing your duty even when the world turns to crap. Commissioned officers represent the highest ranks of the Imperial Navy's personnel, and their commissions usually can only be granted by the Battlefleet Administratum. In some Segmente Majoris, a certain number of officers are generated by the commissions issued to planetary governors and Scola Progenium worlds each standard years to fulfill. Each commission is for a single child of good character to attend Port Roth, there to become a midshipman in the Imperial Navy. Commissions issued to planetary governors are commonly sold to noble families or bestowed in a politically expedient fashion to reward a trusted noble or remove a troublesome sibling. A career in the Imperial Navy is viewed as a glorious, honorable, and very probably fatal enterprise by noble houses, but a sacrifice that enhances the family's prestige immeasurably. The various Scola Progenium, on the other hand, send their very best to serve, especially those with a naval heritage. The rivalry is legendary between the arrogant spawn of Imperial nobility and the earnest young orphans of the Scolas among the officers of the Imperial Navy. A good portion of midshipmen joined the Imperial Navy through a more informal system of patronage. It is not uncommon for an Imperial Navy captain to take on a noble's son or daughter as a midshipman at their family's request. This may be a favor for an old friend or a means to repay an ancestral debt. However, even in this case, most noble children find the Navy a harsh and uncompromising place, where most either excel on their own merits or likely perish and we will start with the ranks at the very top. The Lord High Admiral of the Navy A Lord High Admiral, also referred to as a Lord Militant Commander or Lord Commander, is the senior most command rank within the Imperial Navy. The prior position held by most of these supreme naval commanders was Lord High Admiral of the Segmentum Solar, 
The Lord High Admiral of the Navy oversees the Imperial Navy's interests on the Senatorum Imperialis on Terra, while the five Segmentum Lord High Admirals manage the fleet affairs of their Segmentum battle fleets. The Lord High Admiral Also called a Battle Fleet Commander, the Lord High Admiral is the highest rank normally attainable in the Imperial Navy. Only five of these individuals exist one for each of the Segmenta Majoris. Each one is responsible for the Imperial Navy's fighting forces across thousands of sectors in their allotted portion of the galaxy. Or in the case of the Lord High Admiral Solar, the substantial volumes of space around Terra itself. Although all five Lord High Admirals hold equivalent rank, traditionally the commander of the Segmentum Solar is considered the most prestigious. The attention demanded by the dizzying array of plans, schedules and staffs under the auspices of a Lord High Admiral means they are seldom seen outside their towering fleet headquarters at the Segmentum Fortress. The Lord Admiral A Lord Admiral or Sector Commander is responsible for all naval operations in a given Imperial Sector and has direct command of units of the Segmentum's war fleet allocated to that sector. Nominally, a Lord Admiral is based at the Segmentum Fortress with the other sector-level administratum officials, but most choose to base themselves at the foremost naval facility of the sector under their charge. A Lord Admiral answers not only to his superiors in the fleet, but to the Adeptus Terra as well. Deploying warships and men to patrols, permanent stations and reserve fleets in a way that satisfies both military and civilian needs is a headache that most officers dread. The Admiral And here we have several types. The Solar Admiral Solar Admirals are often prospective sector commanders waiting for assignment to a sector. As such opportunities are rare, it is far more common for Solar Admirals to be dispatched to war zones in command of a reinforcing fleet or kept busy on special duty with their own independent flotilla. The Regular Admiral An Admiral is allocated command of a portion of a sector's battle fleet and responsibility for the security of a handful of star systems and the vast tracts of wilderness space that lie in between. It is rare for an admiral to amass his starships in one place, as they are generally busy patrolling imperial worlds and trade routes light years apart. Perhaps twice in a standard century, the entire battle fleet may be mustered for a punitive strike or to defend against a sector-wide incursion. The Vice Admiral By long tradition, a vice admiral commands the leading division of a fleet the part that would equate with the vanguard of a terrestrial force. In later times, this has come to mean commanding a force of light cruisers and destroyers charged with scouting for the enemy, charting navigational hazards and long-range patrolling. It is common for a vice admiral to choose a light cruiser as his flagship to better keep pace with his far-flung squadrons. The Rear Admiral In ancient times, when an entire battle fleet might be massed together, the thousands of starships present would be divided into three commands, each one under the command of their own admiral. The rear admiral was the youngest and least experienced flag officer of the fleet and so would be given charge of the rearmost division as the one least likely to see combat. Over time, this rank has evolved into a largely administrative post charged with coordinating repair facilities, refueling starships, forming convoys, and other rear echelon activities. Time spent as a rear admiral is seen as essential for a flag officer who aspires to higher rank. Next we will cover the senior commissioned officers. The Commodore Also sometimes called a group commander, the rank of Commodore was originally only a temporary one given to a senior captain placed in charge of a squadron of Imperial starships. Over time, the rank of Commodore has found its way into permanent usage as what were once temporary squadrons stabilized into regular patrol routes and areas of responsibility. 
on rare and terrible occasions, when capital ships join together in a squadron, the senior captain is still promoted to the rank of Commodore for the duration of the engagement. The Lord Captain Sometimes also referred to as Flag Captain, Lord Captain is an honorific rank normally applied to captains who command vessels on detached duty. A Lord Captain speaks backed by the full authority of the Segmentum or Sector Battle Fleet. This is an important distinction when dealing with arrogant planetary governors or petty administratum officials who might be inclined to dismiss the words of a mere navy captain. For this very reason, many rogue traders have adopted the title of Lord Captain. The Lord Captain is the ultimate decision maker on matters of strategy, void law and negotiation, responsible for the lives and souls of all who pledge to his banner. The fate of thousands hangs upon his decisions. Though a wise Lord Captain takes counsel with his advisors and bridge crew and listens well to their wisdom before giving an order. The Captain Imperial Navy captains are masters of all that they survey. The Emperor is the master of mankind, but aboard an Imperial Navy warship, the Captain's very word is law. Aloof and uncompromising, these figures are unbowed by the awesome responsibility entrusted to them. They may be a tyrant, a martinet, a swashbuckler, a strategist or a saint, but a captain will always be an exceptional individual to have earned full command of an imperial warship and all the souls that reside within it. The Commander a commander is a subordinate officer rank who is in charge of individual escort class vessels with a captain or commodore holding overall command of an escort squadron. However, an officer with the rank of commander might also be found as the commanding officer of a squadron of system vessels, wing commander of the attack craft aboard a carrier or placed in charge of an orbital station. Many Navy officers aspire to nothing more than becoming the commander of a frigate with its frequent opportunities for action and glory, or get blown up, as the escorts are the squishiest of vessels in any engagement. The Lieutenant Commander Lieutenant Commanders represent the lowest rank of senior commissioned officers, who usually hold administrative responsibility over one specialty department in the crew of an Imperial warship. Lieutenant commanders often serve as senior bridge officers in their area of expertise, but rarely as first officer. If they perform well, they are in line to eventual promotion to the rank of commander, and their own eventual command over a void ship. And lastly, we'll cover the junior commissioned officers. The Flag or Lord Lieutenant in some segmente, a flag lieutenant or lord lieutenant serves as the executive officer aboard a ship of the line. Those first lieutenants who show their resourcefulness may eventually rise to the rank of flag or lord lieutenant, the second in command aboard a capital ship. Though a lord captain's power is absolute, his time and energy are finite. Someone must stand at his right hand, acting as his voice and serving as the instrument of his will. The first officer speaks and acts with the full authority of his Lord Captain, even prepared to assume the mantle of command should his Lord become indisposed. If a flag lieutenant can prove himself to be resourceful and competent, he may eventually be promoted to commander, and given the chance to take command of his own vessel. The Lieutenant, 1st, 2nd and 3rd a lieutenant is a junior commissioned officer who is usually placed in direct command of a system defense ship or monitor. Many officers in the Navy rise no higher than the rank of lieutenant. It is more common for them to be found acting as second in command aboard escort class void ships, as part of the vast bridge crew of a capital vessel, or in an attack craft squadron acting as flight leader. A lieutenant is regarded as having true potential, and the opportunity for eventual greatness. If they succeed, a lieutenant can expect to advance through the ranks as a third, second, and finally first lieutenant, steadily gaining more responsibilities as he does so. 
However, many lieutenants never make that leap and spend their days serving as valued junior officers on the bridge of a void ship. The sub-lieutenant or ensign. These are junior grade lieutenants who have been recently promoted from midshipmen. An ensign is often given minor responsibilities such as commanding small craft, boarding parties or press gangs. They are often paired with a senior warrant officer to provide valuable guidance and in the eyes of their superiors and the crew, they are treated with respect for their rank, but also caution due to their lack of skill and experience. The Midshipman A midshipman is the most junior officer rank in the Imperial Navy. Midshipmen are actually better described as students with an officer rank. Technically afforded an officer's respect, they are nevertheless still in demanding training to become true officers, and many of their duties are hands-on opportunities to learn. Midshipmen are so-called because they traditionally have quarters somewhere in the warship's midsection, far from the command bridge. Not quite trusted with true responsibility, they remain under constant scrutiny as they haven't completed their training. Should they prove successful, Segmente Command often adheres to the tradition of requiring them to pass a difficult examination to become lieutenants, though some have been known to receive so-called void promotions for particularly impressive actions under duress. And these, my friends, have been the higher-ups of the Imperial Navy, the admirals and the officers. Next time, like I said in the beginning, we'll get down and dirty with the non-commissioned officers and other lowly servants aboard a starship. Which of all these ranks did you find interesting? Let me know in the comments below. As usual, if you enjoyed the video, please click the like button and maybe subscribe for future content. And also, if you're a generous soul, please go check my Patreon page. The link is in the video description. I thank you kindly for watching and wish you all a great day. The Emperor Protects.